Uh, Mr. Kinnaman. Hi. Hey, Andrew. How you doing? How are, is it okay if I call you Joel? <laughs> yeah, of course. Absolutely. Great. Um, thank you very much for taking the time, of course, to speak with everybody and myself included. Um, no, thanks. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I think uh, my chance to speak with anybody who has worked with Master Wu by proxy, the closest I'll ever get to speak <laughs> with him. Um, I, I just like to keep things very casual, so I don't have a lot of structure to this. I'm primarily the news guy at our website, but again, an opportunity to speak with somebody like yourself and speak with somebody who's worked with John Wu is an opportunity I couldn't pass up. <laughs> Can you do you recall your first introduction to to John's work? I, I think uh, the first uh, Wu movie I saw was uh, Face Off. Right. That was my intro, and then uh, and then I started to go back and and see his previous films. And so, other than the obvious, I mean, the obvious would be when look approaching Silent Night, the draw to participating in that would be one working with John as few in North America have, um, but also to be a, a near silent dialogue free action movie. Um, is there anything else that drew you to the project? I mean, the, the, the whole premise of it, you know, like when I, when I, I was having a chat with the Basil Wannick and Erica Lee from Thunder Road and, and we were trying to figure out something to, to do. Um, together and and basil proposed this thing and, and he said listen i i think i have something that you're gonna flip over john woo is making his return to hollywood after 20 years and and he has this film that he wants to do and he wants to do it with you and uh the kicker is there's not one line of dialogue in the whole film and uh and i was like say what <laughs> and uh I think I was pretty much in there, you know, and and sort of pinching myself, like, what is my life where this thing happens to me? And um, and then and then I read the script, and and it was just uh, it was so intense. And reading it, you definitely didn't miss any any of the dialogue, and um, and the inner dialogue was written so well for the character, and it had this cadence and this beat. And um, and then after getting to to you know sit down with with Wu and and uh, and you know sort of getting a, a glimpse of his vision and uh, you know him talking about you know there's these parts of your favorite films that you know have 30, 40 minutes without any dialogue these long sequences but they're still like the most intense part of the film where you're sitting at the edge of the seat. You know, and he wanted to make a whole film like that. And um, yeah, it's, it was a big acting challenge. I thought it was very cool to get to be part of a, a film that in some way is a, an, an experiment. And uh, and um, and now when we've been screening it to audiences and, and we're just like hearing the reactions in the cinema, people are like cheering and and so into it, you know, the the, the fears, you know, because it is it is taking a risk of having a whole film with not a single line of dialogue. Like, is the audience going to get bored? And and the reactions that we've gotten so far is that it's been the opposite, that it's like they can't take their eyes off of it. And actually, they're they're focusing more on it than they would a traditional film. Yeah, I mean, it's very clever in its way that it's portraying the timeline through, you know, you're hearing the radio, you're looking at the calendar. And so you're looking at what's been a but but it's basically a year long path from grief through to revenge, and yeah. it's very clever that way. Um, I, a friend of mine had interviewed him for the New Yorker, and he was talking about working with Chow Yun Fat during the killer, and the scene where he gets betrayed. He goes, "Well, what motions do you dig into?" You know what you talk to Chow Yun Fat. He said, "Well, what do you have in your, in in you that you can pull from to convey how you feel betrayed?" Now, I don't wish anybody to grieve the loss of a child, but you know, you said you know, the acting challenge for you is to convey all of these experiences, the grief through to the revenge. And I don't wish you had anything personal to pull from. But, you know, what do you what how did you approach this role preparing for that? Well, I think that, you know, I, I, I'm not 
an actor that sort of goes to sad memories. Um, I am a pretty emotional person and my imagination is often enough. And, and together with, like, I, I mean, I have sort of a technique to, that helps me access deep emotions. It's usually about losing some kind of control. So I have ways of doing that with breathing. It's like, a, it's a combination of relaxation and doing some explosive thing like screaming or, um, or, or breathing. And, 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 and very often it's, I get it, I need to get moved by the circumstances. So when it comes to losing a child, I spend a lot of time watching interviews with parents that have lost children and and that talk about going through that, you know, the ultimate tragedy. And um, and I think part of uh, what drives me and also what helps me connect with those deeper emotions of the of the of the scenes is. Uh, is feeling connected to watching those that 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 pain that they're going through and, and sort of feeling a responsibility to them and 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 to yeah it, it's a I feel, I feel like a responsibility to people that have gone through that to portray those kind of emotions um somewhat truthfully and um yeah so I sort of get carried away by the by the imagination of it. The, the path of Brian, um, of the, we go through a grieving period. We go then into a period where he now decides, that's it. I've got to get out of this. I, I know what my, it was about giving it away, but so we, I know what my destiny is now. I know what my fate is more, you know, darker. I know what my fate is. We can't give away the ending, <laughs> but it's a John Woo film. We know what the ending is going to be. And those of us who are experienced with John, we know what the ending is going to be. Yeah. Um, the past to me, and correct me, the grief through preparation, you know, and a determination to get himself ready. And then when he's into the thick of it, there's a realization that, oh, crap this is the even most a moment where he feels that he's, it's bigger than him it's bigger than his quest but he still has to go see it through yeah i think you know the, the film it's sort of the, the film on it on its face you know is a very intense uh fast-paced action movie but but the but the character's journey is is a tragedy and it, and it is a man that you know that chooses the wrong path that 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 because of how disconnected he feels from life uh he can't begin the healing process and i think that the only you know that it's the 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 correct healing process is is opposed to everything that we feel it, it it's it's to forgive but instead he goes with the animal instinct of seeking revenge and but that is a path that leads to his destruction and it leads to him losing his humanity. We've got a very short amount of time and I appreciate everything you've done for me today. Um, the action, your, 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 your recollection, you know, your thoughts about the action and how you prepared for it and your own experiences of participating in a John Woo action film. Yeah. So, you know, I was, I was, uh, preparing for this film and and uh, I was able to bring a crew uh that that I've worked with for for several uh, for several years on on several movies so this was sort of an accumulation of of the work that I've done with them and me and the Jeremy Marinas who's the fight coordinator on this he was the fight coordinator on the John Wick movies and you know he's going to be a big action director in his own right um we wanted to really make this exciting but because you know brian is not a specialist in any way you know he's nothing he does is going to be fancy the way we 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 imagine this being exciting is to just make it really dirty and ugly and messy mm -hmm. and the way that we there were two things we wanted that we were trying to achieve and and the first part of that was for me to do the ugly stunts you know like falling down stairs getting wrecked 
you know, getting beat up and uh, and just training, basically doing like classic stunt work, uh, you know, training falls, those kind of things. Um, and and then the other part of it was that we wanted the fights to to have this sort of frenetic, nervous, messy energy and not look so polished and choreographed like they often do in movies. So the way that we did that, and and I think the reason that we could do that is like, I really enjoy training. Uh, I, I train jujitsu and and also some uh, some Muay Thai. So because I was sort of comfortable in those areas, I would be training a lot with the stunt guys I was uh, gonna work with. Um, so we would do some light sparring and 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 some intense jujitsu uh, rounds in between. So we would instead of having the whole fights being choreographed, we would choreograph anchor points in the fights where, you know, a few moves that get, that, that you know, up here, but then like how we get from there to point B or like anchor B, that is more of a real scramble. And, and, and it's like improvised and frenetic and, and ugly. And, and because we trained so much with each other, we felt comfortable enough to turn up the intensity in those moments uh, without hurting each other too much. Cool. And I've also got one more question left. And so uh, John comes back to you and says, Joel, I'm remaking one of my old films. I'm getting the budget to remake one of my prior films, be it the Heroic Bloodshed or the North American Introduction. You tell, and what would you, choo what would you choose that film to be? Well, he's already doing The Killer. So, right. so that one's taken. Um, maybe Hard Boiled? Ooh. I mean, Joel doing a warehouse scene or a hospital scene, buddy? I yeah. don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. I know you've got a very busy day ahead of you. And uh, I, get, I I really appreciate um, your role in this film. Yeah, I really I really like it. Um, I'm going to watch it a bunch more times before I put it to paper and write a review. But thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it, Andrew. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Thank Take you, care. Andrew. Thanks, Anna.